in today's video, I'm going to be showing you an extreme, extreme, extreme 3D hippopotamus with its mouth partially open. It's not all the way open like the five foot distance, but it's like open enough where you can maybe throw a watermelon in there. I love this video. I love this design. I love hippos. This one was obsessed with hippos for about two solid years of her life. I don't, you're not as big into hippos anymore, are you? No, not anymore, because that's like so two years old. Oh, she's three now. She couldn't be into hippos anymore. I still like them, so what does that tell you? I don't know. I love hippos. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. If you love the extreme 3D animals, I have a few others, and I can link links to them in the description box below, and I'll see you next time. Bye! So we are going to begin with a marbled background, and you can kind of... Uh, you have options here. So you can make it more watery looking like it's under, like he's underwater with more blue tones, aqua tones, some deep teals, or you can go more like grass, greenery, forestry type of a look, which is what I did with a few shades of green and a little bit of brown. Once you have that just sort of generic background sculpted, then you can go ahead and encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong and smooth and all of that wonderful stuff. Whenever I do a marble, I use my acrylic on a little bit more of a wet side. So that way it ends up with the nail being very thin which I kind of like because then you have more control over what your final look is and then you can encapsulate it and it gets this nice depth to it some people don't like it to do an encapsulation I know that I've seen some um nail artist boasting that with their acrylic or with their techniques that you don't have to do an encapsulation or some such thing and you know it's whatever works for you is fine so if you if you're somebody and you do an, a clear encapsulation because that's just how your process looks, don't let anybody make you, I don't know, regret that. Don't ever have anybody be like, oh yeah, pay me $300 and you'll see my technique for how I don't need to use an encapsulation. Those things bother me so much when people are, are that... Um, brazen with their boasting I guess so I'm going to be attaching as you can see I pre-sculpted these two um, pieces of my hippopotamus I've got the part of the upper jaw and the part of the lower jaw I'm going to attach them I tried to use nail glue as you guys saw it was a valiant effort it did not go so well so I'm just going to attach them with a with a bit of the same color of acrylic it worked so much better than trying to glue them the glue was laughing right at me <laughs> usually nail glue and I get along at least okay but there are times when we are just we're just not feeling very um agreeable I suppose so I'm going to continue adding more to my shapes of my hippo's face now there is so so much that has to be built into this hippopotamus like looking at this one so with my past 3d animals I'm going to be kind of jumping over all the place I'm so tired you guys I have been baking this entire week and with Thanksgiving and selling some different treats and everything and I have barely slept so bear with me I apologize for my craziness but anyways as I was looking at this hippo I had this moment of oh my goodness there's so many shapes and different movements and I really wanted to have that depth to the mouth and there was just all of these thoughts racing through my head as to how to accomplish the outcome that I was looking for which usually happens at least to some kind of a controlled extent but the hippo was extra extra crazy just in the the way that my mind was racing as to where to begin and that used to happen to me so often whenever I was doing any design essentially I would have this moment where I would look at it and my brain would just it would short out because I'd have all these thoughts racing through my head at once should I start here should I start here what color do I want to pick up first where do I want to begin and the funny thing is, is typically it, it might not even matter where you begin. It's just beginning. That's the kind of the key. You just find a place to start. And the great thing with having that realization that it doesn't matter where you start because you're going to do everything. So maybe there's one step that you're dreading because it's just not as fun or maybe there's a step you're really looking forward to for some people they like to do their least favorite task first and then they go to their favorite part or vice versa and as long as you figure out your system that's perfect that is exactly what you need to do now obviously with the hippo there's things that you know they there's an order to the business like you can't sculpt the cheek and apply that before you have the face glued on or the first those first face pieces glued on but there's always options. Like I could have done more work on the face. I could have sculpted the ears next. You know, there's just, there's these options that you can run through and don't, um, don't take those racing thoughts when you're looking at a design that's complex or different than you've done or possibly more difficult than you've done in the past and let those racing thoughts overwhelm you. I know I'm saying don't let it do it when that's obviously what those racing thoughts are trying to do. They're trying to overwhelm you. They're trying to scare you away from creating something amazing and you just really got to tell them to 
kindly exit stage left and that you're going to do this thing it's going to be amazing and you are going to start at point a and you're going to work all the way through point z and just slow down that's the that's the key here i'm a kind of a go 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 person like i said i've been my week has been just so crazy and reminding myself to slow down especially when i'm working on art is i think the first and most important step always so with all of this being said i hope that that um makes some sense i know sometimes when you have those things and they they those thoughts and or whatever it is whatever you're whatever is stopping you from doing something whether it be unsure of a step or like i said you just have so many things that you know you have to do and you just are having trouble narrowing down which one to start with the best thing to do is just to slow down remember that you're not alone you're not the only person that that happens to i'm sure it happens to just about every single person that creates anything Uh, you know even at some point i don't care how professional you are i don't care how advanced you are whatever your art form is honestly art is scary you know anybody agree with me art is terrifying but for some reason us crazy people that are compelled to do it are compelled to do it. And even though it is scary and terrifying, it's this beautiful experience. And for a lot of people, they shy away from having the the beautiful experience and the outcome because of that legitimate terrifiability. New word, everybody. Write it down. And like I said, it happens to all of us, I'm sure. At least to some point, it happens to all of us. And, you know, embrace it it's part of the process it's a beautiful thing i saw something that i really related to this was a few years ago a photographer friend of mine posted this this uh list and she goes this is the way creative processes work and she said it starts out with your idea and your brain throughout the process it goes i'm awesome i suck i should stop doing this i guess i'll do a little bit i'll do a little bit more hey this isn't too bad hey, I'm awesome. So it goes in this cycle of from I'm awesome to I'm awesome. And there's all sorts of yuck in the middle. And that happens. And I guess the whole point of my story throughout all of this is embrace the yuck in the middle. It's the part that makes the beautiful end result. And it reminds you you're alive. I mean, some people go skydiving to be reminded that they're alive. For me, I sculpt a hippopotamus. So with all this being said, we are sculpting our entire hippopotamus with the same color of acrylic thus far, sculpting in all of these beautiful little details, taking our time, going step by step, doing everything that seems like the next obvious choice. And sometimes when you're looking at something and there's too many too many things to do, there's too many choices, your to-do list is too big and you're looking at your reference photo and you don't know where to begin because you're looking at the the finished result, you're looking at the big picture, you're not looking at small details. What I like to do is I will zoom in on the photo and I will simply just allow, this is when I use my phone as reference photos, I will only allow myself to look at a small section. So if you're looking at a and you know a photo of a hippopotamus, you're like, oh my goodness, he's got eyes, nose, he's got this huge open mouth, teeth, oh my goodness, where do I begin? Maybe just zoom in on an eye and just look at the eye. Pretend the rest of it doesn't exist, both in the photograph and in what you're working on. All you got to worry about is those eyes. Everything else is irrelevant. It's not important to you right now. It's not the thing that you're looking at. It's not what you're worried about. Just look at the eye and then do the eye. And then once you're like, hey, you know what? The eye's done. Then maybe you'll zoom in on nostrils or maybe you'll be like, you know what? I'm zoomed out a little bit and there's this ridge that goes down the center of my hippo's nose. Well, I'll add that ridge down the center of my hippo's nose. No biggie. And you just take it little tiny microscopic bits. See, there's that ridge down the hippo's nose. I'm telling you. Um, But you just take it little tiny bit at a time. And really have reference photos. And multiples of them. So many reference photos. You you have to be able to, when you're sculpting something that is crazy and three-dimensional in this way, you have to have a reference photo from every angle. You have to have a reference photo from the front of your hippo looking down his nose. You have to have a reference photo from the left, from the right, three-quarter angle. The more reference photos you have, the more views that you can toggle between to see what it is that you need to see, the easier your time is, the faster your questions will be answered, and the better results you will get out of your sculpting. When I was sculpting my hippo, I had one image of an open mouth and then I think three other images of a hippo 
And obviously I wanted to have the open mouth. And so I use that one most frequently, but then all of a sudden I'd be like, you know what? I have this from the side. How does, how does a hippo side eye look in a side profile? How does that look? And then you just go, oh, okay, well, I'll just grab my reference photo really quick. And you go and you get it. And then you, you answer your question and you bring it back. So on your hippopotamuses, everybody, we've got the start of our hippo and you can basically choose a gray or a kind of a tan nude color. I have this really beautiful color that is somewhere, it's like a taupe, I suppose. Um, and that is what I used for the base of my hippo. And then you're going to go through and it's going to seem so out of the ordinary because you're going to be adding this coral color to your hippopotamus. But if you look at them, depending on the hippo, some of them have a really rich coral tone to their skin and they have so many different hues on their skin. So start building those in. This is again where your reference photos are going to be vital. You want to look at all of these images and see different colors because not every hippo has this coral glow to it, but some of them really, really do. And if that's something that you want to add, if you, if you like the way that looks, then you're going to want to add it. I'm also going to take some very wet acrylic and I'm going to be adding a wash of a darker brown over my hippopotamus. If you are curious about any of these colors, I will put them, all the color names in the description box below. 99% of them are from Double Dip. Basically, the only color in this video that I'm using that is not from Double Dip is going to be his teeth color and his um, the clear acrylic from the background. Otherwise, everything else is double dip. Um, the only reason I'm not using the double dips acrylic for the teeth is because I don't have a yellow that isn't glitter free from them. And so I didn't want his teeth to be glittery. So I'm using a Koopa, a Koopa yellow. But otherwise, these are all double dip. They're my favorite to sculpt with. So we're going to be just going through, add all of your coloration to your hippopotamus. And at this point, this is one of those, oh my goodness, I, this is horrible. What was I thinking moments when I started adding the color? But then at the end, you're like, you know what? He looks good. He looks good. So we're going to be sculpting our teeth with yellow acrylic, hopefully glitter free on a nail form backing. Two really nice big tusks is what you are, what you're shooting for. You're also going to want to sculpt the ears. So I'm going to take kind of a nice brown shade of acrylic and I'm going to pat that out on my nail form backing into a soft petal shape. So pat, 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 pat. Doesn't have to be a perfect petal shape, but then once it has begun to set up or it's starting to look a little bit, I'm getting rid of that one, starting over. Starting to look a little bit matte is where you're going to want to take and slide just the very tip of your brush underneath one edge. So slide the brush under, fold it in half, and give it just a slight pinch. There we go. Once that's done, we're going to be gluing these pieces we just made into our hippo, or onto our hippo, I suppose. We're going to be gluing the teeth onto the outer edges of the lower part of the jaw. And then once those teeth have been glued, then you're going to want to secure them and add just a little bit more shape to them because they're going to be fairly flat at this point. So you don't want to just leave them flat. Also glue the ears in place. Don't forget about those ears. And I have a little bit of nail glue on my nail form backing that I'm dipping all of these pieces in. If you are gluing little tiny bits together and that is an option, I find that to be so much quicker and easier than trying to apply glue to the design and then having to go back through and fix it if it gets where it's not supposed to be. Plus, because it is such a small amount of nail glue, it dries very quickly and you're not sitting there holding whichever piece it is that you're trying to glue together for minutes and minutes on end. You have just a couple seconds and then it's good to go. Especially if you're going to be securing the pieces in place with more acrylic, whether it be clear or color, then you don't have to worry about that nail glue being a permanent hold. It's very temporary. And so just a little bit that will set up quickly is really nice to use. I'm going to grab more of that yellow. Like I said, I filled out the shape of the tusks and I'm going to be adding some flatter teeth in between them. They don't have to be uh, symmetrical or even or the same size. They can be offset a little bit. Have fun with it. Make your hippo look a little bit grisly. I'm going to be staining these teeth a little bit further with some darker brown, just kind of washed over the teeth. Make sure it really gets in the gums. You want him to look, you know, nice and realistic and hippos don't go to the dentist. So once he's done to this point, you're going to go through and you're going to be securing the ears in place and just finish up whatever you need to. Like I said before, I like to zoom in on small sections of my image as I go. Once you're done or once you feel like you're getting close to done, zoom out, bring the image back to where you can see the whole thing at a time. And maybe you'll find details that you didn't see before. You can have um, the image sitting right next to the nail that you're working on, whether it be on a hand or a practice nail like I am, and you can have them be side to side and you can really get a good idea 
of what you potentially might be missing, what you need to work on, what you need to add. For a while there, I almost completely forgot about the roof of my hippo's mouth. All of those things can happen. So when you need to just go through and take a moment to see what you can see, add a little bit of dark color inside the nostrils. That was another thing that I almost missed, but caught right at the last second. You never know what you might find. Once you are done with him with the acrylic and you are happy with all of his shape and height and yada, 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 we're going to add some last few finer details with acrylic paint. One thing that I found to be incredibly uh, detail adding was to be giving him just a little bit of texture on the front of his face for where the whiskers holes, whisker holes would be. Hippos are mammals, so they do have hair. They have little whiskers on the fronts of their faces, actually very big whiskers. They're very tough, big, coarse whiskers. I'm going to be adding some details around the eyes, especially the eyes. You always want those to have so much detail and life in them, so don't neglect the eyes adding some shading anywhere it needs to just go through and you'll you'll see the stuff I mean hopefully you'll you'll look at it and you'll just find what is missing that's kind of the goal here you can do the same thing like you did before and zoom in as you're getting done you're going to finish your hippo with appropriate top coats gel sealer over the background and then some kind of a lacquer over your hippo always apply a regular lacquer top coat not a gel or a uv cure top coat over your hippo especially for areas that you want to have a nice texture to them things like the eyes and the inside of the mouth that you want to look wet and very shiny you can use a gel top coat but bear in mind anytime you use gel you have the possibility of it filling in your details and sort of taking away from some of their their excitement if they aren't quite as vivid as far as the the sculptured 3d details so I'm going to be applying just a regular, this is a, like a regular lacquer top coat. It is Koopa's 3D Clays, which has a beautiful satin sheen to it. It's not quite as shiny as, as like a gel top coat for sure, but it looks so perfect for a hippo because it gives them that slightly, I don't know, smooth, tacky skin look that hippos are so well known for. So once you have all of that done, this is it. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. I will put links to those past extreme hippo videos, or not hippo, but animal videos in the description box below, and I will see you all next time. Bye.